Grind Gang, how you living, baby? Welcome to this episode of the Daily Grind, where I'm in this beautiful, front of this beautiful grand piano, and uh, we had a great talk. We extended our conversation from the Q&A yesterday about motivation. Where does motivation come from? Why do we want it? Where do, what, what can I do to get more of it? All those things, right? And in the end, we talked about just taking massive action, man. You really want to be motivated? Put it all on the line. Take all the action you can. Put yourself so far into it that there is no way for you to turn back. And I guarantee you, you'll be motivated to keep going. So um, if that doesn't motivate you, maybe hopefully this video will kind of push you along the right way. All right, I love you so much. I'll see you soon. Peace. What's up, grind gang? How y'all living? What's up? Hey, Sunday food. My guy, man. Checking out the lives. I appreciate that, man. Yo, my grind gang in the house. Sorry I'm late, man. I had a really crazy, hectic day. Had a lot going on. I told Mac to turn up that music and now I want it down. I'm still. Yo, what's good? ZW, my man. Yeah, so yeah, we had a crazy day today, working on some really big projects coming soon, really excited about it. And so I just had a full chalk day, and so I had to make some traveling while I was supposed to be going live. But here we are, on the daily grind. Nonetheless, I told you, even if I have to come late sometimes, I'm still going to come. So uh, here we are. And I want to talk a little bit, I want to extend a little bit of our conversation from a question that we had yesterday about motivation, you know? And uh, every day, we're going to do it every day. At least close to it. We're going to try and hit 97% days. 97% days. I haven't calculated how many days out of the year I can miss to reach a 97. But we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty, pretty good. Yo, amazing day. Everybody with the amazing vibes, yo. I just want to love to hear from my grind gang, man. Another amazing day. Yo, y'all just like me, you know that? Y'all just end, end up just like me. That's weird. I had an amazing day too. Hectic, but amazing. Hey, hey Holly. Hey Toodle. Hey, so let's talk about some massive action here, baby. Let's talk about, we're going to extend a conversation that we were talking a little bit yesterday about motivation, right? How do you um, consistently keep motivation? How do you keep momentum and things that you're doing? Like, how do you just kind of stick with it, right? And, and particularly on one places, you know, you're constantly growing. And so in that growth process, you have to, you have to, honestly, but you are going to want to take on new skills, take on, you know, new, like I said, habits that serve you better in the, in the place that you're at right now. Like when I was a teenager, I could sleep 13 hours a day and that was just cool. Like it was no big deal. Like I didn't have anything to do, have nowhere to be. I didn't really have any ambitions or anything, right? Sometimes you're in the state of taking action, the state of, 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 of being creative, in a state of happiness or joy, or a state of problem solving. And sometimes you're not, sometimes you're in a state of, of, of destructiveness, or a state of self-loathing, or a state of you know something that holds you back, right? So it's not about finding motivation, it's about controlling what state am I in, and then finding ways to stay in the creative, productive, um, happy state that's gonna allow you to create the things that you wanna create and be the person you wanna be, right? And so just remember that, like when you're thinking about this motivation, like you, you don't have to find it, you don't have to turn it on. There's only two things that motivate us in our, in our mind, and that's pain and pleasure, right? We're either running away from pain or seeking pleasure. But those are the only two things that like work on a like chemical, like or scientific way on your brain to make you do anything. You either like, like I said, you're really just looking for hits of dopamine from life. And that's all we're doing, right? Is we get it from different places. And then when you don't have enough, you go out there seeking and running for it. And so a lot of times you'll see this, like people won't change. People will do a certain habit, right? Until it becomes very painful for them in their life, right? Like you might have, like, let's talk about drugs, right? A lot of people go down drugs and drugs are fun. You're having a great time until all of a sudden they're not so fun anymore and you're really addicted to them and you like end up on the street and you've been spending all your money and you're homeless and all this stuff and you're like going on this, you're giving up your entire life for this one experience. Um, it doesn't happen like, like immediately it happens over time, right? And then once it gets ingrained in that, it becomes your habit, you just kind of forget and that's just what you do. And so it can be kind of hard to break that cycle or whatever, right? To get out of that. Um, I wish I could remember where I was going to go with that because I was going to go somewhere so profound with that. It's hard. It's hard to do a live show, guys. You know that? It's hard to do a live show. I just realized that. I never really thought about it too much. I always just do my thing, but... Sometimes when you're really trying to stay on like a, a certain track, it can be difficult with a live show. Nonetheless, right? We're gonna keep it moving. So, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna get? How are you gonna get into a new flow? How are you gonna get out? Hey, hey, Jessica, how are you? 
How are you gonna get into a new flow? How are you gonna get out of that old rhythm, establish some new patterns, and, and get into a new flow of things? How are you gonna get into a new state, right? And this is what I want you to take away with today. It's like massive action, right? Massive, massive action. This is something that is, I learned from Tony Robbins, you know, like I really learned about from Tony Robbins, but um, it's about this idea about like, if you want some kind of change, a lot of times we don't really commit to a change or commit to some type of new level or getting that thing that we want in our life, right, that we don't have already. We commit like kind of in, wouldn't that be nice sense, right? It's like right now, oh, I remember what I was gonna talk about, about pain and pleasure, right? You don't wanna quit the drug until the pain becomes so great that you, you, you know, you have to go do something. You have to go check yourself in a rehab or something. But you could stop along the way, right? But we usually don't, it doesn't become like a, um, a must for us. Like you don't need to change until you really look around one day and, and all the pain you're experiencing for that one experience outweighs it, right? So that's what I was talking about with pain and pleasure. But nonetheless, we're gonna keep it moving like I said. And so, what are you gonna do? You gotta take this thing called massive action, right? You have to commit with your entire being to this new change that you wanna make. It could be a small change, it could be a huge change. You know, it, it's not always like, yeah, I'm gonna jump up and just move across the country and, you know, whatever. I'm gonna start living this minimalist lifestyle. It, it could be all sorts of different things, right? It could be just like, I wanna start a new healthy routine with the gym, or I just wanna start eating a little bit healthier, I wanna quit smoking, or I wanna, you know, make better friendships, make more time for my kids. You know, it could be any of these little things. Read more books, right? You wanna do something. But what you can't do is you can't just say, wouldn't it be nice if, right? Like, oh, it would be nice if I could find the time to read more books, but I'm already so busy. Like, it's never, it's impossible, right? you really haven't even begun to like really commit to that. Same thing with like New Year's resolutions, right? Here goes why New Year's resolutions suck and why nobody like makes them. You're not really committing because you want it. You're not be committing with your entire soul, right? You're committing to this New Year's resolution out of a shitty habit, really. Like uh, this is what you're supposed to do. Kind of like how you give Christmas presents at Christmas. It's just what you do. You know, we don't even think about it too much anymore. You don't even like ask yourself like, you know, same thing like Easter candy, like Valentine's come around, what you gonna do for Valentine's Day? Take a girl on a date? Why? Because that's what you do. And so that's what we end up with doing with New Year's resolutions. You just make this resolution because it's New Year's and it's like, yeah, you're in this like vibe of like newness for that one second. It's not your actual state, you're just influenced by this changing of the time. But when you're out of that influence, what is gonna happen immediately? Like you're in the influence of newness. And so January hits and you're like, oh, new year, man. You start evaluating your life. You're like, hey, you know, everybody's making resolutions. We're all making changes. I want to make some changes too. This is a good time to evaluate. So you're in the mood right now, right? And so you set it in that, that intention and that state. But what comes February? Right? That, that, that feeling of newness, that feeling of like, let's be different or like new, it, it goes away, right? Now we're right back into that same routine that we were in last year and the year before that and you know, just whatever. We just keep doing the same things that we always do. Um, why? What happened? How come we weren't able to consistently keep that, that motivation throughout the entire year or even a couple weeks, right? It's because like I said, it wasn't something that you committed to wholeheartedly. So I encourage you all the time, don't look for an excuse to commit to something, look for a reason to commit to something, right? Find the reason in which that you want to commit to the thing that you want. Man, Mac, make sure we write that one down, that's really good. Y'all write that down, that's really, really good. Don't look for an excuse to commit to something, look for a reason. Really, find something and say, this is why I want this. This is the pleasure that I associate with this. This is the pain I'm experiencing now because I'm not doing this, or I'm doing too much of that or whatever, right? And so you've, you've identified this reason that's personal to you and that you, you clear cut, write it down if you have to. All the pros of the, of, the, of the habit that you want and all the cons of the habit that you have now. Any of those types of things, right? But now what you're gonna do is now that you've decided what you want, you're gonna commit to that on, a, on another level, right? On a whole nother level. You're gonna take your spirit, your mind, your body and you're gonna dedicate it to the getting of this habit or to the new state in which that you wanna be in, okay? And so you ask, how, how do I do that, right? How do I dedicate my entire soul and being to whatever it is I wanna get? Well, massive action, right? It starts with saying like, I'm, you don't, you never try. First of all, Yoda said, there is no trying, there's only do or do not, right? And so same thing, you never try. Don't, don't set off to say, I'm gonna try to do this. Or I'm gonna, you're, you're doing it. You're fucking doing it. You're doing it until it's done or you die, right? But it's, it, you're doing it. 
Like once you've established that you're not trying, you're not dibble dabbling, you're not stepping your toe in it, you're getting in here. And you're about to get dirty with this thing. And you're about to figure this thing out, right? And you're about to work it until you have to, right? Whatever you gotta do, you're gonna work it, okay? So you're, that's part of it, is taking massive action, is like it's committing 1,000, saying I'm doing this. I'm not trying, I'm not piddle paddling, I'm not makeshift, like if you have to decide, take the time that you need to decide, but once you've decided, now you're in, baby. It's like, like I learned this in the military. You know, like I got in the military, it was a couple months before I was like, yeah, this shit ain't really for me. But I couldn't do anything. And so even like four, two, four years into my military career, people were like, oh, you're a lifer, man. Cause I was really good. I was really good at my job. You know, I was always fun, having a good time. And so you thought, oh, this guy loves the army, right? But no, I'm just, I'm always gonna try my best in any situation I'm in, right? That's just a part of my character. And we'll talk about that one day too, about, you know, you just, you, you live from your character, not from your circumstances. But no, I couldn't wait to get out. But I would always tell people, I don't know. Right? That's what I tell people, four years in, I don't know. You know why? Because there's no decision I get to make right now. Like, I've already signed my name on the dotted line. Six years is six years, and I'm just doing them. And I'm just, at the end of those six years, when the decision opens up for me again, then I'll try and make it, right? So you have to kind of commit with that same intensity, right? It's really difficult to commit to something for six years of your life. But once you're committed, then you're in, right? And guess what? I don't re regret any of that, right? It was an amazing experience. I learned so much. Turned me into a leader. Came out being awesome. Don't even feel like I wasted my time or anything like that, right? It just ended up awesome. But all I want you to take from that analogy is that you have to commit in that sense, right? You're going to sign your name in blood on the dotted line, and you're going to put your whole whole being into this. Okay, so now that you decided, you're like, all right, I got my whole being in this. I'm in it 1,000 until I figure it out. What can I do to figure it out? Well, now you got to start trying things, right? Not trying things in the sense of, oh, let me try something, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to quit. But trying things in the sense of, let me start finding out what works for me. Right? Start reading the books. Start getting the magazines. Start watching the YouTube videos. You start the study process, right? You start to learn the process of what it is that you want to get. This is for anything. If you, there's no, ha dude, I literally one time, I wanted to know how to take cold showers. There's nothing to taking a cold shower. You just jump in cold water. Like that's it. That's all there. Step one and two. YouTube videos out the ass, out the ass of how to take a cold shower. And then really helpful advice. And even if it wasn't helpful advice, it was helpful to see like, man, there's a lot of people out here doing this. Like, if there's a lot of, if there's so many other people out here doing this, I'm sure I can figure this out. Like, there's something I can do, right? It's not like there's just this one superhuman guy out there doing it. Like, there's people doing this every day. So why are they any better, special, stronger than I am, right? So you start this study process. You start learning, you start growing, you start looking into it, okay? But here's the, here's the thing that, that we're getting to the meat and potatoes of it now. Massive action, right? So, meaning you're gonna have to do some things that are you're uncomfortable with, right? You're gonna have to put some pressure on yourself to succeed in this situation. Essentially, right now, we can use the idea of pain and pleasure, like we talked about, like the only eccentric forms of motivation that we have. We're gonna use this idea of pain and pleasure and we're gonna associate that with our goal, right? Or our new habit, okay? And so, like, let's take a workout for example, right? If you say, I'm gonna try to go walk around the block, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and walk around the block because I wanna get fit, I wanna lose some weight, so I'm gonna try to walk around the block. Um, you, it's easy to do, so you very well might do it. it. Really, the barrier to entry won't be the difficulty in which the task is. The barrier to entry only will be that you're not in the habit of doing it, right? And so you'll just not find the time to do it because it's just not something you do, right? This is like, it happens all the time. You set something that seems so simple and minuscule at time and you like, don't follow it. Because there's no repercussions for not doing it, right? You're really not gonna gain a lot and you're really not gonna lose a lot if you don't do it, right? You could just, sometimes you'll walk around and then sometimes you'll wake up and make a bunch of excuses and that'll be okay, right? Because there's no pain or very much pleasure associated with the situation. Okay, so how can, we, how can we motivate ourselves? How can we incentivize ourselves? We use either one you need, right? Here's a great one, money. Money is a huge motivator for people, right? Go hire yourself a personal trainer. Go find you, it could be something that's just finding yourself a gym partner, right? But now, what, what have we done? 
And this could be with anything, guys. It doesn't have to be. You can find yourself a reading book buddy. Find yourself a group that's into doing the thing that you want to do, right? But find some other people who are going to be doing it in real time. Not only doing it in real time, but looking for you to do it. Because now there's a certain more level of accountability associated with it, right? Now you've kind of upped the stakes. You've taken more action than it just saying, I'm gonna walk around the block. Now you say, all right, I'm gonna take on a personal trainer. I don't know anything about working out. This is gonna cost me money. I have to pay for it whether I go or not. So now you have all this pain. It's like, you don't wanna waste your money, right? You're gonna go because you don't wanna waste your money. And then now that you're there, you're gonna like go 10 times harder than you would have if you just set this like minuscule, I'm gonna walk around the block type situation, right? And so I do this too, you up the ante and all the things, you like and the pressure, like make there be consequence. Cause in life, here's the funny thing. This is why we need individual motivation, guys. This is so, so fucking fascinating and interestingly cool, right? Your job has intrinsic motivation. If you don't do your job, what happens? You get fired, right? You get fired. But what happens if you don't wake up two hours earlier than you're supposed to? What happens? Nothing. You're gonna make some excuses with yourself. You're like, ah, sorry, right, we'll get it next time, and you're gonna keep it moving, right? Nothing happens. You lose nothing. You gain nothing, right? Nothing happens. But in work, right? Other places in our lives where we do perform and we we try our best and we're out here like hustling and moving. There's some type of intrinsic reward or pain associated with it, not doing it. But when you're an entrepreneur, when you're an artist, when you're creative, when you're living your own life, you're in charge. There is no boss. There is nobody who's gonna spank your butt when you don't do what you're supposed to do or fire you or take your money away, right? And so sometimes as a creative, as an individual, as an entrepreneur, we gotta boss ourselves, right? We gotta police ourselves up. We gotta put some boundaries on ourselves and say, okay, cool. We gotta commit some money to this thing. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna commit some whatever. We're gonna get somebody else to hold us accountable, right? Um, this is why coaching is, is important, you know? This is why people go, personal trainers and all these people. It's not even necessarily about the information sometimes. It's just about the accountability factor of I'm paying for this. This person expects me to show up at this time, right? That's gonna change your whole perspective. But in the end, this works with anything. This is just about idea of like taking more action into the situation you wanna do, right? Getting the trainer, clearing out your schedule. Um, if you want to get a change, it's really hard to get the change in the same environment in which you're in your natural habits are, right? So, um, you know, if you are trying to focus in and, and get more schoolwork done, but you hang out in a frat house that parties all the time, you trying to make that change in that frat house, impossible. Impossible, right? Well, not impossible, but you're running up a steep hill. And then you're going to ask yourself why you're having a hard time following through. It's like, well, I mean, all you did was make a half-assed commitment to something and then change nothing around you, right? You really didn't take that much action. Even if you only took an, even if you took a little bit of action and ate a salad for a week, right? You didn't do a lot to change the fact that there's a drawer full of candy bars in your bottom, like in the bottom of your desk, right? So it's about this idea of like, once you committed something, now you have to become the person that is that thing. Right? Like if you're trying to become healthy, well now it's about more than just like, let me walk around the block. Now it's about, let me hire a personal trainer. You know, let me clear out all the junk food in my fucking house and go put good food in there and nothing but good food. So that way whenever I get hungry and I get snacky and you get in your old habit, the old habit of just grabbing a donut or grabbing a whatever, you know, you're gonna open up your fridge and what you gonna have? Nothing, vegetables, fruit. And what you gonna eat? Vegetables or fruit? Or else what you gonna do? Starve, right? But now you've taken so much action that you like set yourself up for success. You know? You gotta, you gotta put yourself in a position to succeed in everything that you do. Any business venture you take on, any new habit or new change or anything, you know? Like when I got more positive, I immediately had to go out and seek other people who were positive like me, you know? Um, when I get more, like, like, it's just part of the law of attraction too, right? And so it works both ways you can start to change your environment around you to be more like the thing that you want to be. You want to be better at public speaking, right? The only way to get better at public speaking is to publicly speak, right? There's not really much other way to do that. So by you saying, all right, I want to get better at this, and so by me getting better at this, I'm going to start by talking to this itty-bitty group of my closest best friends, you're really not, come on, man. You know, like, go for it. 
Sign up for a Toastmasters. Get up in there and like have to talk in front of a room full of people you never known. And let those people try and critique you and, and coach you and you know what I'm saying? And now those people are like, hey man, we noticed you didn't make it to the meeting yesterday. You know? This is why people actually find success in like AA meetings and things like that to like actually quit, right? Now, not very many people who could just be like, man, heroin's tough, dude. I'm so tired of this. So there's a lot of pleasure. You know what? I'm done with this. And then walk away. Right? What do you have to do? What, what is it? And I'm using that because addiction is the most extreme form of habit dependence, right? And so what do you have to do? You have to get a support system. You have to educate yourself. You have to go and reconstruct a whole new mindset around what drugs are. Because it starts off by drugs being fun and then drugs become what you need. And then now you have to recondition your mind because it's not like you still needing the drug in your mind and then saying, I'm not going to do it. It's not going to work, right? You have to really recondition in your mind and your belief system of why that drug is no good for you or what it is that would be a better life for you, right? And so a lot of this goes to with like um, having a vision, you know, this is the, the trail into that. It's all about taking massive action, you know, like in the end, do everything you can to be more of the person that you want to be, right? Don't just be one of those wouldn't it be nice type people. You know, don't just like, oh, that would be cool, or I wish I could do that, or maybe I'll try that someday, or I'm really, really scared, so I hope one, you know, like really just go for it, you know, and then once you go for it, like I said, start trying to do as many things as you can, as many, like, set up as many success, set yourself up for success in the best way you can, give yourself little rewards, you know, tie a, a big trip. You know, take a take thousand dollars of your own money, put it into an escrow somewhere where you just can't touch it, and you say, yo, at the end of this, I'm gonna take a, take a trip. If I do what I say I'm gonna do and I'm gonna succeed and start this new habit, I'm gonna take me a huge trip. And then every day, fill your mind with things that would motivate you from that trip, right? Now we're using pleasure, because you only use pain and pleasure, right? You only kick yourself in your own ass or just put something, a carrot in front of you that's so enticing that you gotta go get it. You know, this is what dream boards are for. You know, people make dream boards all the time and all the things they want. Why? Right? Because it inspires the fuck out of you. Because you wake up every morning and you're like, damn, I do want the fuck out of that car. Man, I really do want that house. What do I got to do today? What do I got to do? How I got to be? Where I got to go? Who I got to talk to? You know, I got to do something because I want that. You know, it's about constantly reminding yourself of where you're going and what it's going to do for you. You know, every day when I'm on my grind, and this is, we're on our grind every day. We're on it, we're on it, we're grinding through it. I'm never thinking about all the things I have to do. You know, even today it was hectic, but it wasn't like I was like, oh, so much I gotta do, and so much, you know, and like, weren't, I was excited for what all, like, I know that from me giving, the universe is gonna give me, right? Like, you get the cause effect. The more I put in, the more I get out. And so I just keep putting in a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. And then it doesn't come in just in the moment because there's time gaps, you know, the universe has to work things. And so it takes time for those things to come back to you. But all day as I'm giving, I'm not complaining about the fact that I have to give. I'm excited because I'm like, I know that this is going to come back for me. I know I'm going to get something out of this. Or I know that this is going to take me to another level. I know I'm going to learn something from this. I know that every time I invest in my craft or invest in my self, right, that that has a payoff. You know, but most of us, we don't, we don't think about the payoff because we can't see it or we can't touch it or it doesn't happen instantaneously. And so we don't think there is one. And then when we forget all the reasons why we're doing something or all the benefits that are going to come from what we're doing daily, every single day, right? Think about that farmer. That farmer got to plant them seeds and he got to till that soil and he got to water it and he got to watch the sun rise on them every single day. And there's nothing. There's nothing there but just an empty field of, of dreams. And every single day the farmer goes out and he works it. Why? Because he knows, because he has faith that if I till this soil, if I do my job, if I grind on these plants, it's not about what I'm gonna get right now. It's not about like, oh, I see and I'm just, I'm hot and I'm sweaty. It's not, it's not about that. This is what I do. If I invest my energy, I get to reap a crop one day. I don't know what day. When, when, it, when it starts splitting up through the fucking ground and when they make the little goddamn beans, one day I get to take them beans off and I get to eat them hoes or sell them hoes or whatever I get to be, you know? And so every day that farmer is just like, he's doing, he's watering it. And he just watches the water going in the ground, not thinking, God, I'm so sick of wasting all my water. That's not what he's thinking. He's thinking, yeah, that's right, baby. 
Drink up, baby. I'm about to get it. You know what I mean? You're about to turn into a big ass bush and I'm gonna fucking get rich off of you. So that's that's you know that's the mentality. Take all the action you can, water the soil, till it, till it, let the fucking sun come up and down and every single day, be reminding yourself why you're doing it, where you wanna go, where you wanna be, and then have that faith. You know? Have faith like that the universe is gonna do its part, that it's gonna take care of you just like it's taken care of millions or trillions of people before you who's helped any and everybody succeed before you, right? Like, there's no reason that it would leave you behind. So, like, if you're putting in what you need and you're putting in what, what is good, you know, you're gonna reap what's good, right? So then keep putting it in. Keep putting it in. Put in much of it as you can, you know? But you can't have acid. Gotta commit. Gotta commit 100. You know, you gotta go all the way in on it. Um, burn all your bridges, as they say. That's another thing Tony Robbins said. Or maybe somebody else. But burn your bridges, you know? Um, when they stormed the islands of, of, I think it was the Caribbean, right? And they were gonna come, I, I really don't wanna mistell this story, so I'm not gonna say any names or anything. Persia. It was the Persia? Yeah. Yeah? Greece yeah, and? Greece invaded Okay, when Greece invaded Persia. Thank God for my brother, man, the actual philosopher of us two. <laughs> so when Greece invaded Persia, right? That's what they did. They said they, they came all the way over there and everybody sailed all these grand boats, huge army. They unloaded the entire army. And then right then the general said, all right, burn all the boats. And they burned them. And then all the, the, think about this, all the soldiers there, you're about to go fight this war. You're like, yeah, we're about to get it. And all of a sudden you turn around and all your boats just start burning. And your only way to get off of this hostile land is burning behind you. Now what you gonna do? And the general said, oh, you're scared? Good, fight. <laughs> oh, you wanna go home? You wanna see your kids? Good, fight. You All you have to do is win now. But he burnt, like there was no retreat. There was no, oh, we can just give up or we'll just quit. You know, there was none of that. Dude, the Koreans, you know what they do when they go to war? Well, used to, I don't know what they do now. They, but they used to send one guy with a gun and one guy with a magazine. They had so many people. You just send one guy with a gun, one guy with a magazine. Imagine this, you're, you had no choice of retreat. The generals and everybody else, they stand in the back of the line. And if you start to retreat, they shoot you, pow. They'll kill their own people if you try and retreat. So there's no retreating. And so imagine being that guy with a magazine. And you just gotta run around the battlefield and wait till the guy next to you dies so you can do something. But there's no retreat, right? What are you gonna do in that situation with that magazine? I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna get my hands on a gun, I'm gonna fight my way through there. You know what I mean? But I'm not gonna die here, I'll tell you that much. You know? So it really set that, when, when you put yourself up to that fight or flight mentality, yo, you kick on a whole new gear in yourself. You know what I mean? It's amazing how many things I've been able to accomplish in my business when I said I'll never work for another man again. I said that, I said I'll never work for another person again. And I'm kind of fudging my rules a little bit by working with Madi, but you know, working with him. And so like, but I said I'll never work, like especially get a job, like I'll never get another job again. That, and every single time that I've wanted to quit on this, every single time that I wanted to quit, I promise you, the last and only, I'm like, Man, I can't be broke again. I can't eat ramen again. I can't. I can't stress about my gas being on E again. I gotta do. I gotta do something to make money. Cause it's so funny. I'm really skilled. Like I can make thirty, forty dollars an hour if I wanted to, fixing helicopters and stuff. You know, I got skills. I could work if I want to. But I was just like, every single time I'd be like, all right, let's go get this job. And right then I'd be like, you fucking said, man. You fucking promised me. You looked in that mirror, and I did. I see it. I, every time I see my face. I see my face in Afghanistan crying, saying, I'll never fucking work for another per If I get out of this desert, I'll never work for another person again. I'm gonna do my own thing. And so every time I'm about to quit, that's what I think of. I see that face looking in that mirror saying, I, you said, man, you promised me. And then my, 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 my Jiminy Cricket comes on my shoulder, he's like, you promised us. You said you was gonna do this or die. You're now you're gonna give up? You're gonna be a little bitch? You gonna just fucking quit? You just gonna fucking give up? You just gonna sit here and die? That's what you gonna do now? You just really gonna go out here and work for the next 30 years of your life, Rod? That's what you gonna do? See, I'm associated all kinds of pain with that idea. I don't want nothing to do with that, all right? So what's it done for me? Well, now I grind every single day. I wake up with a whole different, like, yo, we don't make art today, we don't eat. That's it. You don't figure out a way to get better at your art today? Guess what you don't do, Rod? You don't eat. Your, your kid don't get clothes. You, you know, nothing pops for you, boy. You gonna die out here if you don't get it popping. So there's a different, like that's motivation there, right? Put a gun to your head. You get really, really motivated really, really fast. You know what I mean? If I, hey, you, you better do what you said you was gonna do or I'm gonna kill you. 
Get, oh my God. Think about how fast you move. Think about how quick you would go, right? The motivation is inside of you. There's no like pulling the motivation out. You know, it's not about finding the motivation or being inspired. It's about just like turning it on. Do whatever it is you think about whatever it is you gotta think about. Put whatever pictures you gotta put up. Make whatever promises you gotta make. But take actions. Go out there and really go in on that. Really go in on that. Don't, that in the end, that's all I want you to take from this. Don't have assets. You looking for motivation? Go in. Make it hard for yourself. Buy the, buy the shit. You know, fucking spend money. Spend money on it. That's it. That's all you gotta do. In today's day, spend money on it. You spend a lot of money on it, you gonna wanna figure it out. I promise you. You go spend a thousand dollars on a TV, how long you think you gonna figure out the instructions? I'll sit there all goddamn night. We can't take this bitch back. We better figure these goddamn instructions out. Then we gonna turn this TV on because it's, it's already sold. Right? Am I right? Am I right or am I right? I'm right. I hate to say it, but I'm right. You got it. You got it. Want it. Want it. Want what you want bad. Want what you want so bad that you feel like their life isn't really worth living if you don't have it. Because then once you get to that point and then you commit to that, you know, then you're on a ride. Then you're on a ride. And it's not going to be easy. I never promised easy. Shit, I would never promise easy. Hey, it's going to be hard as fuck. It's going to be hard as fuck. Like, I, my whole journey been hard as fuck. It's going to be fun as fuck, too. It's going to be your best life, too. You know what I mean? Shit, being where you're at now, not doing the thing you want to do, whatever habit that you think is going to take you to the next level, not having it, is hard. Right? It's not easy. It's not easy being out of shape or broke or unhappy with your job or unhappy in your relationship. or uh, It's not easy being unhappy with who you are and what you are. So you might as well be struggling trying to become what it is that you want and who you want to be. So that's all I'm saying. I love you guys so much, man. I appreciate you. I know, the late ones tend to be good sometimes, girl. And you know what I'm talking about, Jess, because you on it right now, stuck behind a camera. You know what I'm talking about. You on it right now. Do whatever it takes. You know what I mean? Do whatever it takes. There is no surrender. All right, I love you guys so much. And uh, as always, you know, I see you tomorrow. I hope so. I hope you come tomorrow. Please come tomorrow. All 90 y'all come tomorrow, man. That'd be dope. Matter of fact, all 90 y'all bring a friend tomorrow. We have 18 people in the live. That'd be tight. That'd be tight. All right, I love y'all. Peace.